Uh, I'm one of the uh, PLM application engineers uh, at CATI. Uh, we'll be talking about new product development using SOLIDWORKS data management tools today, and that's primarily going to be uh, PDM in, in SOLIDWORKS Manage, so we'll get into that in a minute. I've been doing SOLIDWORKS now for, uh, started using that in about 2008. I got into data management and uh, PDM back in the enterprise PDM uh, back in 2010, and I uh, worked at a global company where we had locations all over the world. Uh, where I was able to be the uh, global system CAD uh, system administrator for PDM and global CAD admin. Uh, for the last few years, I've been helping folks as an application engineer and a strategic solution consultant uh, to basically come up with ways to make their processes, their their data management more manageable. Uh, and so, hopefully, today we'll be able to take us through a few things. We're going to start out in PDM Pro. Look at some project management options that we have available in there. And right away, you know, PDM is is you know not the first place you think of for product management, but we just want to show a few things and and make sure that we're getting the most out of our PDM Pro system uh, with our data manage or with our product project management. So many management words. Wow. Uh, next, we'll be, going, we'll be going through some project management options in SolidWorks Manage, and this is where it really takes off. We really start to look at some in depth. Uh, functionality of SOLIDWORKS Manage and the capabilities that we introduce when we bring in those PLM-like features into the project management capabilities as we kind of bolt that onto PDM Pro. We'll have a few minutes at the end, like Nick said, for question and answer, but we're going to primarily stick in and actually uh, do quite a bit of the demo in PDM and then most of it in the Manage system. So we're going to start out right away here with SOLIDWORKS PDM Pro. And what we want to talk about is a few of the advantages of what we're doing uh, in case there's a few folks that don't have PDM. They come here to, to see what PDM is about. Um, really, the biggest one for us as SOLIDWORKS CAD users is that single source of CAD collaboration. So we have this data management system that allows us to do the check in, check out. And, you know, over the last year, this has been very crucial to organizations using SOLIDWORKS, right? Where do we put our data? We can't be on the same, maybe we can't be in the same building. Uh, so what are we going to do? Uh, we need to be able to have a single source where our folks can get into PDM, uh, get to the data, and not step on each other's toes. So obviously where we're going to do our revisioning and versioning, which I don't know um, how you do uh, project management and you know the new product development in your organization. Where I came from, there was a lot of keeping track of versions and revisions, even in the in the early stages. So making sure that we had documentation of that. PDM also lets us take advantage of that Windows Explorer capability where we're really storing it in a folder structure and, and, and putting it into a Windows Explorer piece. So it's easy to get up and running, right? So it's easy to get in there and start using the tool um, and, and having new folks jump in and use the tool where it makes sense. We have that single source of truth spot to throw our data um, so that it's under control of the system at all times. Start in the vault, stay in the vault. One thing that we don't talk about, one of, one of the things that we miss out on a lot of times is some of the automation um, and standardization things we could do in PDM Pro. And that's one of the ones I wanna show today here. We'll go through it here a little bit in a minute, but the admin templates that we could do, right? So what we could do in PDM Pro is we could create, you know, folder structures that are based on smart numbers and serial numbers and things like that to drive our projects in our folder structures. Um, and we can utilize this automation of this creating a, uh, a project folder from a template that is very much set up against our, maybe our standards or our in regulatory requirements. It's pretty slick because whenever we do this, we'll take a look at it here in a minute, in a little more in depth, but we actually can have permissions assigned to those folders as they're created. So the template will drive and really kind of keep everything in line so that we don't have different folks making folders and doing things in a different format. We can have this way to kind of make this very uniform. Because we're putting these projects in a, usually in a separate folder, like an order folder, a project folder, whatever you want to call it, we can also have an alternative workflow that could drive our projects. So we don't have to stick with just our CAD workflow. We could have in that project folder, a workflow that has a different group of folks signing off, making changes, being able to have visibility. 
all that is, of course, uh, optional, and we can set that up how we need to and fully customize this to make sense to how we do business. There are a couple limitations to using this. Um, generally, we see workflows, you know, every day when we're dealing with PDM that, you know, release my CAD file, whatever that, you know, may look like, and they're very document driven. Some of the processes that we run into might require more than a workflow. We might have a process that needs to get kicked off before the document is ever even created. That's where, you know, we, we may have a little limitation there if, if we also need to have other groups outside of, you know, engineering and the folks that have the PDM connection, you know, be able to start process and kick it off. Maybe that file is not even created yet to, to kick the process off. Another limitation is that, you know, we don't have this built in ability to do tasks. So we tend to have different systems kind of running our tasks and things like that. Uh, we don't have the project timelines or built in reports and dashboards. But what it does do is it allows us to have that single source of truth and we can have this uniformed uh, way to create our, our documentation in our folder structure with permissions and smart numbering. So what I want to do is just take a quick look at this and, and how it works. And we'll go through this for a few minutes um, to show how the admin templates work and what we can do with them. So the way an admin template looks to a user, it's actually silly easy as a user. Come in and I right click, really, I can have it set up anywhere in the vault. So if I jump to a folder I shouldn't be in and try to run a project, it's gonna put it in the folder I, I require in my standards. So if I go in and select it, it's gonna put it where I want. So I go in and right click anywhere, select new, go to my, my first layer, my grouping, which you can dictate based on the menu string in the admin tool, and then pick on my template. I get presented with a nice little uh, template data card. I fill in that information according to what's required. On this one, I don't have anything necessarily required. Uh, some stuff is automatic though. Once I fill in that information, it goes ahead and creates a folder structure with files and folders named according to what the information I captured in that template data card. Uh, this is pretty cool because I, I could utilize this maybe if I don't even have permission to create folders. So if I went into the vault and right click to try to create a folder, my user might not have that, but I might have, I could have the permission to run this template and create a folder according to our specification, according to our template requirement. So what I wanna do is just take a quick look at this in the real system and, and kind of do a, a run through of what this looks like, and then also show the back end and the admin tool real quick, and then we'll move forward. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start out as kind of the user side of it, right, is what it would look like is for the user. Um, I tend to put orders in a folder here. We're gonna call it orders. I have a list of things that I've created with my template already. I have a smart number with a P, the year, and then a six digit uh, serial number afterwards. And then I have the customer name so I can identify that order quickly. All I could do, or all I need to do here is right click. Like I said, I could do this anywhere in the vault, but I'll do it right here so you see the actual creation of the folder. So you're not like, hey, later in the comments, hey, he never actually made one. No. Uh, so we'll go ahead and create this real quick. And I'm gonna say new order. Again, this grouping can be changed. So if you needed to have a specific group that had just projects, or maybe you have one that's, uh, you know, new product development for this group or that group, you can have the different groupings so that they could see what their available uh, template templates are. I'm gonna go ahead and hit new order. You see my form pop up with a, Automated number, like I said, it's a it's a smart number system with a serial number. Go ahead, everybody has Salesforce these days, so I'm gonna plug in my Salesforce number. The description for this one is gonna be a new widget. We'll make a kit. And the internal number, give it something here, not a phone number, there we go. Uh, my customer, we'll keep it with Acme. Go and I, what I can do even from here is plug in information that could drive stuff later on in the workflow. So I could select who's gonna be um, notified know who's going to be a part of this or whatever I need to do here. So I'm going to go ahead and pick project manager, Dave, pick my project engineer. I'll keep it as myself. I can make a new, you know, a note here that says new widget for 2021. When I hit okay, what's going to happen is it's going to create a new folder under this Acme folder. And it's going to have a folder structure inside of it, populated with some documents that are named based on what I put plugged in here. So I'm not telling you you have to remember this, but you, you should be able to see some numbers here, populate to documents, 
as I plug them in. When I hit OK, it's going to create some documents. It's also going to create a document that I want to show the data card for. So this is an option with the templates that we run. You could force them to just fill out that first card that we looked at and then have the rest of this be silent. Or I could say for this particular file, which pulled in my number for uh, my internal number, my Salesforce number there, show them the data card so they can optionally fill out additional information or require them to fill out additional information. So you have the option to show this or dot that's built into the template when we create the files as well. I'll go ahead at this point and hit create file. Now you can see my second Acme folder right here. When I open it up, I have a folder structure. Inside my folder structure, I have documents like the budget that popped up. I could have a checklist, you know, maybe for um, a checklist that needs to be for my, my project so I can make sure that that gets done on every single project and name it after our internal number every time. I can even have a specification that includes, you know, this is the specification we need for this particular project. So that could get included with the template that someone has to follow, maybe a, a, a testing, whatever, a testing spec or a packaging, whatever we need there. Your call, you choose your own adventure at that point. Um, when we go back to this orders, though, this is now where I could start plugging in my design data and give the um, give the team rights to put files, populate files that they're working on for this project into these folders. And again, this information <clears throat> could be uh, that's stored in these folders could be driven by an alternative workflow that maybe is slightly different than our normal CAD release process. So this is just one way that. We think that these these uh, admin templates that we have that you can set up um, in your vault and your PDM Pro system are pretty valuable in keeping us uniform, keeping things under you know underneath the standard, making sure people are playing by the rules, and that we don't get by the get bit by those uh, regulatory requirements that you know come into play when it says everything needs to be structured in this way. This is where we put files, and maybe those ISO documents or. Uh, you know, FDA or DOD documents that we're dealing with in the folder structure that's required according to our process. So if you do have any questions about these, we'll chat about this later, but this is just one of the ways that we could do PDM project management capabilities that here's where we can structure everything and have everything included in a single uh, format using templates. I'm going to jump back into here, pull this up, make sure that's running. And the next step, we're going to change gears just a bit, and we're going to go into the SolidWorks Manage section. Now, first things first, what is SolidWorks Manage? And I'll run through this very quickly in case there's some folks that don't know what this tool is, but it's an advanced product data management tool. It's more of an item-based, record-based tool than PDM. Uh, PDM tends to be a document-driven tool. It extends the capability of our SOLIDWORKS PDM by accounting for project timelines, which one of the reasons why we're here and what we want to look at is the Gantt chart capabilities and the project management piece. We can monitor tasks and assignments in our projects so that when we are when we are in SOLIDWORKS Manage, we can quickly see the tasks and the uh, to do's that are assigned to a project so that our project management capabilities are that much more intelligent when we're looking at our workload. We have flexible item management, so we can start keeping track of the bill of materials and the items and things early on in our project. Uh, so we have that capability right inside of manage um, when we're dealing with that. And we can also see the project related information along with process and uh, bill of materials and engineering change. That's a different uh, uh, webinar, but this one we're primarily focusing on. Uh, project management. So we have dashboards that look at our projects, that look at the tasks that are still outstanding, that look at the revenues, things like that, that we can inc incorporate. We do this all based on data that we're working with and that we're using every day, but it just might be in, you know, all over the place. Uh, it might be in multiple systems or whatnot. Um, the big point of this too is the, to understand that when we have a system like Manage that helps with our industry standards and our regulatory requirements, we can utilize these tools to build out very, uh, very broad and very detailed systems that can come in and actually uh, basically alleviate some of the, re the the issues we see when we have regulatory requirements. 
so we can have things be broad where they need to be and granular where they need to be according to our regulations, our regulations or industry standards. Like I said, we're going to focus quite a bit on this project piece and, and look at that. And this is the four pillars that make up manage. We're going to stick right in here in this project management piece. Here's some of the key functionalities that we have in manage. You might see a few things throughout. We'll stay right here in the project management piece. However, I would say if you see something on here that you go, man, I'd like to know a little bit more about this or that. Let me know. Um, I, I would love to have a chat with you about uh, how manage could make life easier for you and and actually enhance your your team so project management right now when we look at the current project management tools on what what folks are doing we tend to see stuff like this where folks are in microsoft project where they have all of their gantt charts and and tasks and and roll-ups that they do inside a project Right, see Outlook where we handle our email notifications or we're, you know, scheduling out tasks for users and calling them meetings, whatever we're doing there. SharePoint to store things or, um, you know, kind of have uh, have that area to maybe even have some kind of quasi workflow that just turns into a mess. And maybe Excel where we have our information, we have our bill of material information or a task list or whatever. Um, and th these are all good tools. We're not saying that they're bad tools or anything like that, but they're not connected to our engineering data. They're not connected to our project team. So what ends up happening is we have duplication of efforts. Uh, we run into issues where folks uh, took information out of one piece of the tool and plugged it in somewhere else, and that information gets messed up because they didn't complete it or they didn't fill it out correctly. Um, what I'd like to introduce though, is if, that we do it and look at it's Alberts Manage for project management. It is a connected tool. It's a fully connected tool to our PDM system. So every day when we are working on our CAD files and SOLIDWORKS and plugging them into PDM, that information is connected directly to Manage so we can see what's going on in Manage right from our PDM add-in. We have visibility all over the place. So we have those, those dashboards that show our projects where they're at. They show what's going on and what's happening with it. Uh, so we have visibility, real-time type visibility. We have task lists that are set up to where um, our projects are built off a task list. And those are also visible on any kind of report or dashboard we look at. We have Gantt charts to drive our project in stages that we could create from templates, which we'll show here in a minute. And we have resource loading and even keep track of things like holidays and vacations. So we can actually see where the real time is spent. Everything is template based for what we're looking at so that we can automatically create stages and tasks that are based on what our project needs to look like. Those can be modified after we create them. But it's a good spot to start from. Right? It's a good spot where we can come in and create a new product development template for our project and start there so that the minimum requirements are met as we go forward. We also have charts and reports that are a great way to uh, keep track of where things are at that are right inside of every project. So we can set up these pieces so that when we create a project, we have a chart and reports that are basically uh, set up to where they pull the information from our project or all projects uh, so we can keep track of things pretty quickly. So let's jump into manage and actually look at some of this stuff in action. Uh, get out of this PowerPoint thing, right? We got to do PowerPoint, but let's get into the tool and actually see it in action here. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be jumping on to our system that is a manage system. Let me get this blown up. In this manage system, this is built on uh, this year's version 2021 service pack three. So if something looks different than what you might be running, that's okay. Um, if you're not updated to 2021 service pack three yet. So this is SOLIDWORKS manage. And what we're going to do is we're going to start out kind of in this, this dashboard area to take a look at our projects that we have going on. Okay. So when I look at my dashboards, I have mine set to automatically go to my tasks, which I don't want to be there at the beginning. I actually want to be on my projects first. Go here, go to my projects dashboard. And this is going to show kind of an overview of all the projects I have in my managed system. I can quickly pick on a project to see where the information lies. You know, where are we on track? Are we way overdue? <clears throat> based on the project right here in the description. I can come over real quick and pick on a specific user and see what their load looks like, how late they are, what they're dealing with. Um, let me get to someone who has some green for once. 
Um, what we could do is also have based on, you know, filters that say, show me when it's completed, not started. Uh, we'll go ahead and see the not started ones. All this information is, uh, could be updated in intervals. We could have it be an, a manual update, or we can even come in and say, refresh this every 10 seconds, you know, whatever you want to do there. So information could also be exported out. Let me do this. Come on. Export the dashboard and I can print this entire dashboard out um, as a CSV file, an image, a PDF, whatever I need to. Or I can go to a specific pane. Maybe we'll take this one. Pull this pane up and actually uh, export just this one as an image or a PDF or Excel or whatever. So it's it, this dashboards actually turn into kind of like a on demand reporting system after we have everything configured the way we need. So I might start here for the day and go and see which projects I have where I need to be, uh, what, you know, what information I can glean from this, uh, from this dashboard. Next, what I'll do is I want to take you through the actual, I'm going to skip some of these other pillars of management, just go right into the project piece for new product development. If I look at a new product development record, um, this is all the different projects I have running inside of my managed system. You can quickly see that I have some properties. I could go and consume any of this information. Uh, think of these as containers. So each one of these projects is its own little container that's made up of tabs and information and, and other records that we can utilize. So this project container uh, for this particular one, we're looking at a miter saw. We can have files that are related to it, just like I showed you in PDM. I could have a checklist propagate with every new project. So if I have a new project development plan or checklist that I have to have, I can plug that in so that it meets my requirement of, of creating that with the template. I have the big, the big piece of this, which is uh, the planning side of it. I can see my Gantt chart. I can see the stages of my Gantt chart, see the progress, all that information right from uh, this single project container. Um, for all the regulatory reasons, we could show all the audit trail of everything that's been done to this project throughout history. Uh, we can even save this out, export that out to Excel so we can fulfill whatever requirement there. I can see all the tasks, all the to do's in every stage I'm looking at, or I could just pick uh, one or two of the stages here and pick what I want to see. You can see this information really quickly in a task board, show all the different uh, so this is all the stages in my planning in my Gantt chart. I can see all of the uh, tasks underneath the buckets, right? So this is kind of my task board uh, for what I need to look at and consume very quickly. Uh, one of my favorites in the newer version. So if you're if you're running on an older version of Manage, when you upgrade, you actually get this this chart that can be broken down for tasks, different time periods built into every project. So information that we consume about the tasks that are going on. Show me maybe the next seven days or, you know, whatever we're dealing with there, we can plug in different times and dates for the tasks and what we need to look at. This can also be saved as an image out. So all this stuff could be saved and shared if we need to. We can also have reports run for this project. So one of the things and we'll jump into a little bit more of this stuff here in a second, but when we look at this and I needed to get information out, something I don't want to miss, I, I can run a report against my new product development. <clears throat> These reports are fully customizable. They can be used downstream for all sorts of things. Uh, but I could I could create these project reports to show the stages, to show all the tasks and the progress that we're dealing with. These can be set up on demand, like I just did here. I can run this as needed, or I can have it set up on intervals and have it run every week or every month or what you know, right before our, our monthly new product development meeting and have it sent to everyone that needs it alleviating some of that uh, data collection that we do for our meetings unnecessarily. Some more of the things inside of this container, we can have a bill of material that follows this project all the way through that includes more than just our SOLIDWORKS file. We can have uh, information in our bill of material that's that maybe just represents something that we buy off the shelf that we don't have a drawing for. It may represent something like a drop of thread lock, like I have here. Uh, it could be bubble wrap, plastic bags, whatever, but it could also be other things um, that we need to account for. Maybe testing specifications. Maybe there's 
a color for the paint that we need to follow in a Pantone color. We can account for those as records in this system, but we don't have to create drawings for a, a paint color, right? And apply it to our bill of material. Uh, these bill of materials could be, let me go grab this. I can open this bill of material in a new window. We can actually uh, do quite a bit of things with exporting these bill of materials as CSV and, and XML and all sorts of whatnot. Uh, so we can actually use these bill of materials throughout and we could see these uh, in, the pro in the project the entire way through. We can also store our project de deliverable links here. So when I do have something from PDM, I can actually come in here and add a file to my project and, and have it be kind of that point in time where I attached it at that version, the revision, and that stage. So this particular one, I had my engineers apply this file and attach it in the planning stage. So the engineer that was assigned the task to create the models attach those as a project deliverable to the project. So I could go see those files right inside of PDM. Um, what we could do is actually move these files around if we needed to, do whatever we need. The next thing that I, I like to say, this is this is something that I think is is pretty nice um, in manage that that, I, that you don't see a lot of other places. These are special objects. So in this particular case, we have things like project issues and risk management. It's something that's required in my uh, regulatory requirements is that I need to have some of these items accounted for according to my standard procedures. So what I could do is actually come in here <clears throat> and have a risk and come in and just say, I need to I need to run a new risk. I probably need to check this out. Hold on. Here, let me check that out. Sorry. It protected me against changing it. It was checked in. That's good. Go ahead and uh, hit new. And now I can actually plug in a special object like a risk. I can have attached files to it. We can have tasks against it. Uh, we can plug in information. Maybe this is a broken machine in the shop that's needed for this project. Probability is five and the impact, let's give it a three. Okay, we'll hit save. And it'll do some of the some of the calculations and the properties for me. It unlocks some other things. I could attach a file if I needed to from even outside of the system, right? So I could go and attach something for my email. I could attach something from a vendor, whatever I need to do. I could run a task against my project, against this one item, this risk, okay? So hit save and close. Now this task, I can actually come in and assign, um, you know, assign this to someone as a record. Actually, let me open this up. Let's do this. Assign a task, and we're gonna say find new parts or fix. We could do this, and I could assign this to the user. This is gonna be someone in our shop here. Plug that in. Should only take them about four hours, and we need this to actually be done next week. So now, when we save and close that, that has actually been now. Um, sent and assigned so that task can now be done by the other user. So instead of blindly send an email, they can now come in and see this task right inside the project they're working on. So inside of projects, it's kind of nice. So as we start collecting those things, we collect the risks and the project issues. We can come in and see all of our projects at one time, all of the risks. So I can see all the risks across every project or all the issues across every project and have visual cues built in for certain scores uh, for my, my risk value, uh, and basically be able to see, um, see the information in a, across all the projects in one shot, okay? So with this project management piece, the other part of this is that it's not just built for engineering. Uh, we can utilize tools, which we're not gonna get into a ton of it right now, but we'll look at, uh, you can utilize web browsers to, to run some of these things and to get in and uh, sign off on tasks. Uh, the web solution, which is called the web plenary client, uh, that client can actually be utilized to take part in these project management capabilities and be able to have uh, input, even when you're maybe not in front of your engineering workstation or we need someone out that's that's on a phone or on a, on a tablet, they can actually participate um, in that workflow and in that project. So, 
with these projects. Um, go ahead and minimize that. Going to get through here. So we believe that uh, between PDM, where we store our data, right, and between uh, manage where we can have these advanced capabilities for our project management piece, that the SOLIDWORKS management, a SOLIDWORKS data management tools uh, are really a great option for our project management needs.